Good morning, vloggers. Well, no, I'm the vlogger, aren't I? Uh, good morning, YouTube. I prepared myself a little one inch fitting welded onto an RJT. You check this. Nice little bit of welding around there, isn't it? If I do say so myself. And uh, I'm just going to apply some Antox to clean this up just to get rid of the stain and I could use a buffer wheel but why have a dog and bark yourself a chance and get in there as well and the reason I've put this together this morning only took me five minutes is we have fittings from GC supplies not much only a little order but just enough to get the plate chiller functioning, or at least I hope. I'll just pop that there. Make sure I've got none of this toxic slime on my fingers. And we'll take you in to the workshop and we'll have a look at what we've got. Come on. So we've got a sexy little box from GC Supplies. Return other fret. Oh, I don't know what that means. Must not be for me. So yeah, just some little fittings in here for this plate chiller that we've been working on for the past month. But it allowed me to test the plates. Oh, look at this. He sent me a present. Cheers, buddy. Look at that. You don't get that kind of service from every company, do you? Can't recommend these guys enough. Cheers, Andy. That's a bit extra. So we've got the liners, we've got the nuts, and we've got the invoice or the dispatch note, which I will pop over here. And we'll get rid of this. So the plan is, drag this over here. I'm going to pop all the gaskets onto the plate chiller, and we're going to blank off like uh, the outlet and we're going to put water into the inlet and then we're going to go to the other side and we'll test both sides of the plate chiller like that. I'm hoping that I don't have to have counter flow on the cold and hot side. I'm thinking that if I test one side at a time then if I find any water coming out of the product, if I'm testing the water, then that means that the product is leaking, that the water is leaking into the product, vice versa. You know what I mean. Anyway, let's get to it. Well, would you look at that, boys and girls. We've had exciting, yet sometimes disappointing results with uh, this plate chiller. So, gone together, I figured out how the plates all go in. That's not a problem. What I didn't expect, was that our brand new, refurbished, lovely looking fresh gaskets have grown. Yes, they've all grown a little bit in length. So they wouldn't fit into the plates. So I've been fighting with them and the only thing I came up with was to trim them down a little bit. So you can see I've just taken little nibbles off the length and we glued them together with super glue, which worked. It worked quite well. And then we've got them in the, in the stack. So I'm just hoping now that we can take this outside, test it outside, over there. Outside the workshop, I meant. So that's product in, for instance. So if I fit that there, we'll take it out yonderwards and we'll give it a whirl see if we can see any leakage appearing out of any there. I certainly hope not. But in the meantime, I've just had this parcel pop into my lap and it feels like cans of beer. Been bashed around a little bit. But uh, yeah, I've got a little note inside. County Downs leak delivered to C. Harrison. Small Axe Session IPA from Bullhouse Beer. 
Well, he's provided three of these, these cans. Well, that's very kind of you, random seller. Look at that. Hey, that's what happens when you use my herpes. My herpes are probably the worst uh, delivery service out there. There we go. Hope you don't mind me reading this out. Uh, hi Chris, I'm a daily watcher of your brewery build. I own a brewery in Northern Ireland based in a 150 year old former cow shed. That sounds really good. I built my six barrel brewery, brewery from old dairy tanks and scrap as well as some tanks from breweries that I've closed down. I have a lot more work to do like welding wise. Need to put in a lot more pipe work and I'm going to build a control panel to make my brew days more efficient. Watching your videos has allowed me to see there are other people going through the same daily struggles I've been going through, I'm sure many other brewers do. We don't sell much in England apart from some casks at camera festivals, so you're one of the first people to taste our canned product. Enjoy the beers and put your feet up for a change. It will be great to come over once it's all finished and you're more than welcome to visit our brewery at any time. Cheers, Willie. Thanks, Willie. I might just take you up on that. If you're ever over here, mate, get yourself into the brew shed and uh, I'll have a pint with you. But I will heed your advice, sir. Without a doubt, I will be... Oh, I love that. Love and science. That's a good tagline. But yeah, without a doubt, sir, I will be putting my feet up and enjoying these. I might even share one with Stuart. Nah. Oh, and of course, the obligatory shout-out... It's Bullhouse Brewing Company, folks, for any of you over in that neck of the woods. Sounds like a really nice guy, get him supported. Right, we're hooked up. I've got the pressure dial on one side, so we can read what pressure we get up to. Hooked it up to the mains on the other. I'm not holding my breath. But let's uh, see what happens. I did spill some water. That's water. So what's that failure mode there? Uh, let's have a look. That is between the end plate Yeah, that's the end plate and the I didn't get the full sheet of gasket I was going to put in. I've just got a smaller piece. So it looks like that's where it's coming from. Right, I gave it a whirl and we had a little bit of a leak. Uh, and I think it might have been down to the fact that I had to have on there one of the piece, a piece of rubber acting as a gasket, which I didn't want to do. Uh, but fortunately, in the meantime, I think the piece of silicone that I ordered from eBay, yes, it has arrived. Woo! It's bigger than I anticipated, said the actress to the bishop. So, let's roll this out. It's a nice piece of silicone, isn't it? So, I'll just whack this plate on there and we cut a piece to the size of a plate then I think uh, that should be good enough Yep, I snapped the threaded rod. Looking at it, 
It looks like M12. Oh man, unbelievable. So I found some M12. Threaded rod on tool station for £6.72 a metre. It's not bad going really, is it? So I thought what I might do is go and pick some up and obviously cut this off and replace it. I mean, I feel like I'm throwing good money after bad with this at the minute, but uh, wow. Yeah, you can really see what I did. Look at this. Yeah, look how I've stretched that bolt. That was obviously in there. And that's been stretched so much, it's got thinner and thinner and thinner until crack. Just snap clean off in the nut. So uh, yeah, I was trying to over tighten it, you see. And then I thought what I'll do is, there's no washers on it. So I thought I'll put some washers on if I'm gonna tighten it up that much. So like a prat, I just wound one bolt off, put a washer on, wound it back on, went to wind this bolt off, and because I'd done that, it must have talked over and put a bend in that rod. And then as I'm trying to wind the nut off, it stretched it, because it won't go around the bend, and broke it. So I was careful this end. So what I might do is add another one in here, so there are six bars on it, and just see if that, See if that has a effect, but I think unless I come straight back after going to tool station, which uh, I've got to go and get the kids with jam, that means I'll have to do that at the same time. Will I get to weld that back on tonight? Probably. I've totally had enough. Now I've snapped my bolt. I've broken my nuts. Chance it'd be a fine thing, is that an air? So we are going to get Dominic now, I've got changed. I found some M16 threaded rod on Screwfix's website. Uh, five one metre lengths for 20 quid. And then a big pack of nuts, M16 nuts. Uh, even though it's galvanised, it's high tensile. So the plan is grind the galve off the bottom cut the other ones off which I think are only M12 and install M16 threaded rod all the way across then it'll have the pulling power of a Russian weightlifter maybe not but yeah that's the plan so screw fix it is folks right, we've just shot back from tool station and uh, yeah well picked up this M16 threaded rod and the difference is huge. They're the nuts, and they really are. They're big boys, they really are big boys. And the uh, the threaded rod. Oh, by heck. So, five lengths in here for 19 quid and 50 nuts for a tenner. I spent 30 quid on all of this tackle. This threaded rod is about as thick as my index finger. Whereas the M12 stuff that we had on was about as thick as your little finger, I reckon. So I think once, once we get that welded on, it's going to be a lot more suitable. You all right there, Doug? And a lot stronger, uh, easier to wind down the fittings, I think. I also picked up some straight RJT, uh, RJT compression fittings for the valves on the cooling system for the... Uh, for the fermenters but uh, yeah that's going to wrap it up for today oh and two uh, John Guest stop ends for the rotating spark jar that I forgot to get the other day but yeah I'm going to wrap it up for today lads and lasses I'm not going to go back in today uh, it's six o'clock the kids are mardy well one of them is anyway Abigail wanted a McDonald's so she's still sat in the car shall we bother her yeah I didn't want to get her a McDonald's because we're having pulled pork for tea. We're having pulled pork. Oh, not happy today. Oh well, there's always tomorrow. We'll see you then.